This video is all to do with order of operations, what people often refer to as bid mass, and that tells us the correct order in which to carry out calculations when we're doing maths, and that's all the time, not just when we're doing these bid mass exercises, it's whenever you're doing any calculations in maths, you always follow this order, because we don't always just go from left to right. Let me dive straight in with an example to show you what I'm talking about. So let's say we've got something like three add seven times two. Here, we actually do the multiplication first, by which I mean we do the seven times two, which gives 14. Then we add that onto the three to give 17. So we didn't just work from left to right. So multiplication, we do that before we do the addition. So another similar example, 16 minus seven times two. So the same thing again, we're gonna do the multiplication first, by which I mean we do that seven times two. So it becomes 16 minus 14, which is two. So if we don't just work from left to right, then how can we know the correct order in which we should do things and how can we remember that? Well, that's where bid mass comes in. So it stands for brackets, indices, that's powers of numbers, three squared or five to the power of four, that kind of thing. Those little numbers are the index numbers. That's where indices come from. Um, then we've got division and multiplication. And in fact, you could, they have equal importance. That's why I've written it like this, the D and the M together and it's the same for addition and subtraction. I'm gonna do a few examples later on that will illustrate what I'm talking about there. So I want to go through all the different kinds of combinations that you might come across, and I want to do them in order of the ones that you're most likely to come across and the ones that you're most likely to sort of get stuck on initially. But I'm gonna go through all the different combinations that you need. Before I do that, don't forget that you can practice all of these and in fact any maths GCSE questions over at mathskitchen.com. It's free to practice those questions and for our members we keep a track of the progress that you've made and we make intelligent recommendations that are going to move you on to your target grade based on the work you've done on a site, your strengths and weaknesses and lots lots more besides. So that's over at mathskitchen.com. Right back to a bid mass. Four add six divided by two. So we're going to remember bid mass and we haven't got any brackets here. We haven't got any indices or powers of numbers, but we do have some division. So we're going to carry out that division first. We're going to do the six divided by two. Six divided by two is three. So the calculation then becomes four add three, which is seven. Three add seven and then in brackets that whole thing's squared. Okay, so we're bid mass, we do have some brackets, so we evaluate that first. In other words, we carry out the calculation that's inside those brackets first. In this case, that's three add seven, which is 10. So then the calculation becomes 10 squared. In other words, 10 times 10, which is 100. Four times three squared, okay, we haven't got any brackets. Indices, yes, we have. We've got that three squared, so we do that first. Three squared, three times three, which is nine. The calculation then becomes four times nine, which is 36. Now, this one might seem reasonably straightforward, but in a slightly different context, something like this, where we've got find the value of three X squared when X is five, it often catches people out when it's written like this, okay? So we need to do, it's, it's essentially, it's three times five squared. Okay, and you must do the five squared first. So five squared is 25, then you times it by three. So that will give you 75. Five add six squared. Well, do we have any brackets? No, we don't. So we move on to the next thing along, which is indices. Do we have any of those? Yeah, we do actually. We've got the six squared. So six squared is 36. The calculation then becomes five add 36, which is 41. Seven times eight minus five. So bid mass, we're gonna work through in order. Do we have any brackets? Yes, we do actually. So we work out the stuff inside the bracket first of all, which is eight minus five, which is three. So the calculation then becomes seven times three, which is 21. 27 minus eight add three. Well, we've got some brackets. So we're gonna work out the stuff inside the brackets first of all. So eight add three is 11. And then we do 27 minus 11, which is 16. 10 minus seven add two. Now, although bid mass, the A 
comes before the s, in other words, addition before subtraction, actually those two things carry equal weight. So actually, if you've got addition and subtraction, you just do them in order from left to right as you see them on the page because they carry, they carry equal weighting. So in this example, we would do 10 minus seven, which is three, and then add the two, which is five. Six times seven divided by three. Well, although Bidmas tells us we've got the D before the M, division before multiplication, in other words, actually those two things carry equal weighting. So when you're doing division and multiplication, you can just work from left to right. So in this case, we would do seven, uh, sorry, six times seven, which is 42, and then divide that by three, which is 14. Now, there's a slight quirk with these when you're doing multiplication and division, which is that actually, if you did it the other way around, if you did seven divided by three, and then times that by six, did it that way around, you'd get the same answer. So actually, with division and multiplication, it doesn't matter if you go from left to right, or if you do the division first, followed by the multiplication. So when we've got a question like this, where we've got multiple operations, we do the exact same thing, which is that we go through the calculation in the correct order. So we look for brackets, and if there are brackets, we evaluate those first, and then indices, you know, powers of numbers, and then division, multiplication, and addition and subtraction. So in this example, we do have brackets. We've got that seven minus three in brackets. So let's evaluate that first. So the calculation then looks like 13 minus four cubed. Because seven minus three is four. Then we keep working through bid mass. Okay, what's the next thing we've got? Well, we've got that cubed. That three is an index number. So we do that next. That is the I indices. So four cubed is 64. So the calculation then looks like 13 minus 64, which is minus 51. And that's your answer, minus 51. So a question like this, 24 divided by seven minus five squared with the seven minus five in brackets. We go through bid mass. Do we have any brackets? Because that's the first thing to look for. And yes, we do. We've got that seven minus five. So seven minus five is two. The question then looks like this, 24 divided by two squared. So the next most important operation to carry out after the B for brackets is the I for indices. That's index numbers, powers of numbers, and we've got one of those. We've got the two squared. So we evaluate that. We carry that calculation out. Two squared is four. So the calculation now becomes 24 divided by four, which is six. In this question, we've got three times, and then in brackets, six squared minus 21. And then those brackets are being squared. Okay, so we're just going to go through the correct order of operations. First thing we're looking for, remembering bid mass, the B is brackets. So do we have any brackets? Yes, we do. We've got the six squared minus 21 inside the bracket. So let's evaluate that. Within that bracket, we've got six squared. That two is the index number. So that's the bit we're going to do first. That's the I from bid mass. Within the bracket, we end up with 36 minus 21. So that's what our calculation looks like now. So we need to do three times whatever is in that bracket. So let's finish off evaluating that bracket. 36 minus 21 is 15. So we end up with three times 15 squared. Now we look at our calculation. Do we have any brackets? No, we've dealt with all of the brackets now. Do we have any indices? Yes, we do. We've got that 15 squared. So let's evaluate 15 squared. Well, 15 squared is 225. So our calculation is now 3 times 225, which is 675. And that is your answer. That's everything you need to know to do with order of operations and how to carry out calculations in the correct order. As I said, you can go and practice all of that over at my website, mathskitchen.com. The link is up here or down in the description below. Thank you very much for watching today, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.